Hello, everyone. I am going to uh, tell you how we are going to use nuclear reactor you know, to study the properties of the neutrinos. Now, first of all, let me uh, explain okay, what a neutrino is. Uh, it is an elementary particle uh, that we call okay, a lepton. And according to you know, the, our standard model of uh, particle physics, uh, the neutrinos are massless. And also being uh, a lepton, so a neutrino usually okay, will only interact through okay, weak interaction. So as a result, okay, when are we try you know, to study the property of you know, neutrinos, uh, we need to have a strong uh, neutrino source and also okay, the, with a relatively large okay, detector. So the, in my uh, following okay, the presentation, I'm going to you know, the, you know, tell you a little bit about how you know, we get uh, anti-neutrinos from nuclear reactors and how we are going to use uh, the anti-neutrinos to, to do experiments. In particular, okay, I will highlight uh, a few experiments uh, that um, rely on nuclear reactors. So the first one is the discovery of uh, the neutrino or more precise is not the anti-neutrino uh, in the 50s. And also recently uh, we um, utilize nuclear reactors uh, to study uh, neutrino oscillation. So I will try you not know, to cover you know, a few you know, the, uh, experiments to give you some idea you know, okay, the, about you know, say this, this type of experiments. And if uh, I still have time, then I will also you know, okay, uh, say a few words about you know, okay, say the reactor neutrino experiment uh, that is used you know, to measure or to search for you know, the magnetic moment of uh, the neutrino. Now, you know, when we have a nuclear reactor producing okay, electricity, it relies on you know, nuclear fission. Now, in the fission process, um, we have you know, some neutrons, you know coming from, okay, say the nuclear fuel that collides with a uranium-235 okay, nucleus inside of the nuclear fuel. And subsequently, the uranium nucleus breaks up into okay, two smaller uh, radio uh, isotopes. These are unstable and usually they decay by beta decay. As a result, then we obtain you know, the electron anti-neutrino. Now on the average, we have about okay, six anti-neutrinos produced in one nuclear fission. So typically, if we have a nuclear reactor that can generate you know, one gigawatt of electricity, that will give us about six times 10 to the 20th you know, electron antineutrinos per second. So therefore you can see, you know, okay, a nuclear reactor is a very powerful, intense and pure uh, electron antineutrino source. That is ideal for doing uh, basic research. Now, however, not, uh, this is not, you know, okay, say the whole story. It turns out that you know, the antineutrinos coming from the nuclear reactors uh, are derived from you know, the four major, major uh, isotopes. Uh, we have just, okay, so they talk about you know, the anti-neutrino obtained through the fission of uranium-235. It turns out, okay, in the nuclear fuel, we have a lot of okay, uranium-238, and also by uh, these two you know, isotopes, uh, we produce uh, the plutonium-239 and also the plutonium-241 uh, isotopes. And you can see, you know, hey, the, when we do experiment using nuclear reactor, what we observe actually is you know, the sum of all the anti-neutrinos 
coming from this you know, four major radioisotopes. Furthermore, when we operate you know, okay, the nuclear reactor and use up you know, the nuclear fuel, then you know, the, the amount of uranium will continue to go down as a function of time. Whereas okay, for the plutonium, you know, they will continue to go up in portion. So as a result, when we use nuclear reactor to do experiment, then the resultant anti-neutrino energy spectrum that we observe in the experiment changes with time. And this is okay, a problem when we try you know, to say do a precise measurement, uh, as you will see in, okay, the, in a minute. Now, after we know a little bit about you know, the, the anti-neutrinos coming from the nuclear reactor, then we can now proceed to look at okay, some of the experiments uh, using okay, the, you know, all the anti-neutrino from the reactors. So the first experiment is the first experiment is about the discovery of the anti-neutrinos or the neutrino. Now in 1932, okay, when the uh, Professor uh, Pauli proposed uh, the existence of you know, the neutrino to explain uh, the continuum energy spectrum of uh, beta decay. You know, he was just a, just a speculation. However, experimentally, people you know, they try very hard you not know, to uh, prove the existence of you know, the neutrino. And the the successful experiment was done by Professor Rhinus and Dr. Okay, Cowan in the uh, 1950s. And this picture shows uh, the sketch of you know, the, uh, the experimental setup. So they utilized um, you know, some amount of uh, liquid scintillator, which is very rich in uh, you know, protons, as, okay, say hydrogen, and also the they have um, you know, photomultiplied tubes surrounding the liquid scintillator to detect you know, the light coming from the liquid scintillator. Now also okay, the in between you know, the liquid scintillator, uh, they also put in you know, some water as, uh, with uh, cadmium chloride you know, dissolved in it. The cadmium is really good in absorbing okay, neutrons. Now you may say, why do they want okay, to have okay, say cadmium and also okay, using liquid scintillator? It turns out that the reaction, uh, they take advantage to detect the anti-neutrino is through, okay, say this is this called okay, anti-inverse uh, uh, beta decay reaction that, in, that is initiated by you know, the anti-neutrino. So as I said, you know, the uh, liquid scintillator is very rich in proton. So therefore, okay, once in a while, the anti-neutrinos you know, coming from the reactor will interact with the proton to give us okay, a positron and also a neutron. Now the positron will lose its kinetic energy by exciting you know, the molecules inside of the liquid scintillator. And subsequently, okay, it will come to rest and annihilate with an atomic electron inside the liquid scintillator to give rise to two back-to-back -back, you know, gamma rays. And eventually, you know, the gamma rays will be converted into just a burst of light, such, such as shown okay, say down here using an okay, no, oscilloscope. So you can see okay, there's the signal you know, coming from you know, the annihilation of the positron. Now, at the same time, the neutron has a very low you know, kinetic energy. It will perform some kind of random walk inside you know, the liquid scintillator by scattering off you know, protons. And eventually, you know, okay, the, it will come to rest and get captured by you know, the cadmium. And the cadmium will be in the excited state after absorbing you know, the neutron. And when it de-excites, 
back to the, the ground state, then it will emit some gamma rays. So as a result, this gamma rays will give rise to another burst of light a bit later than you know, the positron. So by detecting the signal coming from the positron, and also later, okay, the signal coming from the neutron capture by cadmium, then essentially, then we can tell whether we have observed, you know, say the incoming anti-neutrinos. Now, the, these two gentlemen uh, spend, okay, say you can see, okay, quite a few years of their time uh, to obtain, okay, some examples like this. And in the end, they concluded that uh, they have observed you know, the neutrino that now we call okay, the, the electron antineutrino using okay, our convention. Now, besides okay, this okay, major discovery proving the existence of you know, the antineutrino, um, the techniques pioneered by Professor you know, Rhinus and Dr. You know, Cowan essentially laid down the groundwork okay, of uh, a reactor anti-neutrino experiment that we still use okay, the, up to today. Now, uh, if you have heard about okay, uh, the lecture given by Professor okay, Kajita-san, uh, probably okay, you realize uh, one of the very surprising uh, property of the neutrino is the so-called okay, neutrino mixing through you know, the discovery of a neutrino oscillation. So let me okay, recap the meaning of neutrino mixing. Now, according to okay, say this idea, the neutrinos that we observe okay, the, in the experiment, that is okay, the electron, the muon, and the tau neutrinos, actually a okay, uh, combination of three mass eigenstates. Each one has okay, a mass that I call okay, M1, M2, and M3. And the relationship between the neutrinos that we observe in the laboratory and this three no, the, uh, neutrino mass eigenstate that we don't see uh, actually is described by you know, this okay, matrix equation. So basically it tells us okay, how okay, the individual uh, neutrinos ob observed is related to, you know, okay, say this free you know, okay, mass eigen states. And this okay, is what we call you know, the mixing matrix. And sometimes okay, we call you know, okay, the, it okay, PMMS the matrix. Now it turns out okay, this matrix okay, is described by only four uh, parameters that we call you know, okay, mixing angles, theta one, two, Theta two three and theta one three, as well as a phase we call the delta that tells us okay whether uh, neutrino oscillation is the same as okay anti neutrino oscillation or not. Now among okay this okay three the mass eigenvalues uh, at this moment we don't know no way whether okay say the m three is the smallest or the largest. So this is okay. What we call okay, say the neutrino mass hierarchy, or sometimes okay, we call it, okay, say the ordering of the neutrino mass. So this is okay, one of the open problem. Okay, we need to uh, address okay the, in the future. Now, um, using this okay free mass uh, mass eigenvalues, uh, typically okay, we define something we call okay the mass square difference, defined as okay, say. Um, the mass square of, okay, say one of uh, the mass eigenstate minus the mass of you know, the other eigenstates. And because, okay, we have only three kinds of neutrinos. So as a result, okay, there is a equation governing uh, the mass squares as, okay, shown here. Now, through the parametrization of, okay, say the mixing angles and the phase, then we can describe, okay, neutrino oscillation. Now, it turns out we can design the experiments so that, okay, we can measure, okay, 
one or sometimes maybe two of uh, the mixing angles. Now, for instance, using okay, say this mixing angles, uh, we can uh, write down the probability of you know, say an electron neutrino after okay it travel a certain distance l if he has okay say energy e so this is okay the, the expression that will tell us okay about okay say uh the probability of okay say this okay say transformation now what's the physical meaning of say this equation it turns out sine squared two theta one three represents essentially the amplitude of the oscillation. Whereas, okay, so the delta m square tells us about the wavelength of the oscillation. So therefore, experimentally, if we can measure, okay, say so the amplitude and also the wavelength of the oscillation, then we can then determine the mixing angle and also, okay, uh, the mass square difference like this. Now, another very important take home message that we learned from neutrino oscillation is that neutrinos do have mass. So as a result, okay, uh, we find out the standard model is incomplete. That tells us, okay, that there will be physics, okay, beyond uh, the standard model. So now let's just, okay, the, look at, okay, some of uh, the experiments studying neutrino oscillation using nuclear reactor. So the first one is the Kamlin experiment done uh, at the beginning of uh, this millennium. So in this experiment, we utilize one kiloton of liquid scintillator located one, about one kilometer underground in the, the Kamioka mine in Japan. Now, by a stroke of luck, this mine actually is surrounded by 55 you know, Japanese okay, nuclear reactor. Furthermore, if we look at, okay, say the, the amount of anti-neutrino coming from all these reactors, it turns out most of them are coming from about 180 kilometer from the detector. So therefore, if we know the, the energy distribution of the incoming anti-neutrinos, then essentially, then we can study you know, the energy spectrum of the anti-neutrino after okay, they detected with okay, the, our detector. This is okay, uh, the result of you know, the, the chem land after okay, running for roughly about you know, seven years or so. And you can see you know, okay, if uh, there were no neutrino oscillation, based on, okay, say the knowledge of, okay, say the operation of the nuclear reactor, then we expect, let's say the energy distribution uh, that we would have observed at the Kamlin detector would be following you know, this, okay, uh, dotted line. However, Kamlin actually observed, you know, say this data points. So you can see essentially we have lost some of you know, the anti-neutrino uh, the, when they travel from the reactor to the, the Kamlin detectors. So as a result, okay, by looking at, okay, say the distribution of you know, the data points, then we can then extract you know, the mixing angle, theta one, two, and also you know, the mass square difference, delta M square, you know, okay, uh, one, two, like this. And this is okay, the, a very long okay, wavelength you can see okay, in a minute. And this mixing angle, it turns out okay, it's relatively large. If you work it out, okay, it's about 33 uh, degree. Now, one of the problem with okay, Kamlan, as I said, okay, the, they have to rely on the knowledge of the anti-neutrino energy spectrum at the detector. Now, if we want, okay, say to do a precise measurement, this will be a problem. So therefore, okay, in order for us to overcome this kind of a systematic issue related to, okay, say the nuclear reactor, then we come up with okay, a new experimental approach uh, that is used to determine uh, the mixing angle theta one three. So what we do is 
near the detector, uh, the reactor, then we put okay one set of detectors very close to the reactor, and then another set of detector farther away from the reactor. And also, okay, that we can try to position the far detector near the oscillation maximum corresponding to the oscillation of the mixing angle theta one three. Now you may say, why do we want to do this? It turns out we can use the measurement obtained with our near detectors to predict what we should observe at the far detector. So therefore in this case, we don't need to know any detailed information about the anti-neutrinos at the reactor. So by using, okay, say this kind of, you know, say relative measurement, then essentially we can suppress, you know, this systematic issues related to the operation of the reactor and obtain, okay, the, you know, a very good measurement of, okay, theta one three. Now, around 20 years ago, uh, three experiments in the world were set up to study you know, the mixing angle of theta one three. So one is in France, what we call okay, double show, and one called Reno in South Korea, and also uh, the Daibei experiment in China that I'm involved. So therefore I'm going to use okay, the, the Daibei experiment to illustrate how okay, say that we obtain, uh, you know, say this mixing angle. Now this is okay. The, the layout of you know, the Diabe experiment. All together, we have six nuclear reactors. Two here, and two more over here and over there. Now for each okay nuclear power plant, you no, know, we have an, a near underground hall with up to two anti-neutrino detectors installed for detecting the anti-neutrinos coming from the reactors. And then about okay, 1.6 kilometer inside the mountain, then we have the far experimental hall that can have up to four detectors to obtain, uh, you know, say the inverse beta decay reaction. Now, this is a picture showing you the, uh, the uh, anti-neutrino detector we use okay, in Dai Bay. And we essentially use a very similar experimental technique as okay, Professor okay, Rhinus and Dr. Cowan experiment. So we also use okay, liquid scintillator, but this time we are positioned farther away from the reactor. So subsequently we use, okay, say, you know, 20 ton of liquid scintillator. Now, just for comparison, recall, okay, in Camden, we use, okay, a thousand ton because, okay, the, uh, the Camden detector is, you know, okay, 180 kilometers away. So as a result, okay, we need a bigger detector for Camden, but a smaller one for, you know, the, the Daibe experiment. And using this, then uh, we can then detect, okay, say the, the uh, signal coming from the positron and also the neutron from the, the inverse okay, beta decay experiment. And this picture okay, is, uh, shows you, you know, when we you know, okay, built the detector. So to give you some idea about the size of the detector and human being is about, you know, say, you know, 1.5 to 1.8 okay, meter uh, in height. And our detector is okay, five meter tall and also about five meter okay, in diameter. Now, uh, we started the experiment in uh, the Christmas Eve of uh, 11, uh, 2011. And by the time you know, the, uh, we have, okay, say um, enough data using, okay, say only six, okay, detectors, uh, then we find out that some of uh, the uh, electron antineutrinos coming from the six reactors uh, disappear by the time okay, get, they get to okay, our experimental halls. And this picture or this graph shows you, okay, say, uh, the amount of uh, antineutrinos that uh, disappear uh, for you know, the individual detectors. So you can see, okay, the, uh, we do 
observe, okay, say more of the anti neutrino disappear, you know, at you know, 1.6 kilometer. As a matter of fact, okay, we observe about 6% of them disappear. And from say this, okay, say disappearance of the uh, reactor anti neutrinos, subsequently, then we deduce uh, the mixing angle sine square uh, 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 2,013 is okay, about, okay, say this quantity. That translates to a value of about okay, nine degrees for weight theta one three, which is okay, say a lot smaller than okay, say the mixing angle theta one two uh, uh, measured by Kamnan. Now, when we okay uh, install okay the uh, two more detectors and uh, took more data until okay nineteen uh, uh, 20, uh, uh, 2015, then we acquire okay a lot more events. And as a result, okay, we can really see okay, the, the energy spectrum of the anti-neutrino at okay, say the far detectors okay, very well. So again, you know, the blue solid line is the prediction of okay, say the energy spectrum if the, there were no oscillation based on okay, say the measurement done uh, at you know, say the near detectors. So you can see very clearly. Uh, the observed okay, data points is quite different from, okay, say the prediction. And also you can see, okay, because theta one three is smaller, so therefore you can see the difference between them is very different from, uh, say the difference we observe, okay, in CAMLAN. So to see it better, when you take the ratio of, okay, say the, the uh, observed value and you know, the prediction, then you see, okay, the, you know, how many of uh, the anti-neutrino uh, uh, is missing as a function of uh, the uh, energy, energy of uh, the positron that we call the problem energy here. Now, um, the latest result, okay, from the Diab experiment was announced, okay, in uh, 2018. And now we can measure uh, essentially this amplitude of the oscillation to about 3%. And also, okay, but, uh, to the similar precision for, okay, say the this, okay, the you know mass square difference. Now, the most, okay, say the telling story is, okay, really this graph. You can see, okay, in in Dia Bay, we when we okay the, look at the data, okay, in a slightly different way. Essentially, now the x-axis is you know, that essentially, you know, the distance divided by the energy of uh, the anti-neutrino, you can see, okay, we observe the entire, okay, oscillation pattern at, okay, you know, 1.6, okay, the, you know, kilometer or so. Now, this should be compared with, uh, say, the oscillation pattern uh, obtained, okay, by CAMLAN at, okay, say, you know, much farther distance. So you can see, you know, okay, the, you know, the nuclear reactor really, okay, is a wonderful tool, uh, allow us uh, to really uh, study neutrino oscillation. Now, besides, okay, uh, determining you know, the values of you know, the mixing angles, um, we can also you know, use nuclear reactors uh, to look for, you know, the potential, you know, okay, the uh, um, neutrino types. In particular, you know, okay, we call you know, that the, this is, okay, sterile neutrino. These are uh, neutrinos uh, that will not interact by um, you know, strong force, weak force, or electromagnetic force. They can only interact you know, okay, by gravitational force. However, there's a speculation that uh, the stirring neutrinos can mix with, okay, say, the, the uh, active neutrinos, such as, okay, say, the electron neutrino. So therefore, okay, one way we can search for okay, stirring neutrino is to see whether uh, we see okay, any kind of, uh, of a uh, distortion in the energy spectrum when we detect you know, the anti-neutrinos coming from the reactor, because okay, maybe on the way, you know, the stirring neutrino produced okay, in the reactors will, uh, will be transformed into you know, case, uh, the 
uh, active uh, anti-neutrino type. Now, this is okay, the, the idea behind, okay, say that the search okay, done by Diabe. And you can see now in this case, when we look at, okay, say the, the energy uh, spectrum using, okay, say the spectrum that, okay, we obtain, okay, using uh, the detector, okay, in the near uh, experimental hall, uh, we find out okay, there was no change which should be compared with the prediction if uh, there were a stirring neutrino, okay, mixing with you know, the uh, electron antineutrino, we should expect, okay, say the energy spectrum to have this kind of, okay, say wiggle, but we did not see that. So as a result, okay, we uh, come to the conclusion, we haven't observed, okay, the, uh, the existence of a stirring neutrino with okay, say the, the mixing angle, this one is a new one called okay, theta, okay, say the you know one four, and also okay, say the, the mass squared difference, uh, you know, say like this. So in our words, okay, if uh, say there uh, there were okay, say the star neutrinos, it would not okay, say occur okay, say in this okay part of uh, say uh, the parameter space. So it must, okay, say, be hiding, okay, somewhere, okay, on this side of, okay, say, the plot, right? Now, so after then, okay, say, uh, looking for the okay, story neutrino, uh, the observation of a non-zero value for theta one three actually has, okay, some a very important implication, because it turns out now. Uh, theta one three okay is not zero. That will allow us okay continue to use okay nuclear reactor to perform a new experiment that would uh, that will be used to address okay the, the uh, mass ordering problem. Now, um, if we look at okay say the, you know what happens, this is okay say you know what the ex experimental signature uh, we would uh, ob observe. All right. Now, um, if we look at okay, say the equation for you know, say the uh, anti-neutrino uh, continue to survive as an anti-neutrino at the detector, then if uh, say there were no oscillation, then we will have okay this big curve. Now, however, because okay the, we have a uh, uh, oscillation due to you know, the mixing angle theta one two. So therefore, okay, we will have a distortion of the energy spectrum, okay, essentially following by, you know, say this, okay, say uh, back curve there. Now on top of, okay, say the oscillation of the uh, theta one two, then we will have the oscillation due to, okay, the mixing angle theta one three. Now in this case, uh, if we have, say it's the so-called, okay, the normal uh, mass hierarchy, Meaning that you know fatal uh, the mass m one m three is okay say the largest, whereas okay say the inverted okay the mass hierarchy m three will be the lightest. Then in this case, uh, they will give rise to okay very different okay oscillation pattern due to okay fatal one three. So therefore experimentally, what we need to do is to measure, okay, say the oscillation pattern due to, okay, theta one three as good as we can. And then by looking at the positions of all the oscillation maxima corresponding to, okay, say uh, theta one three, then basically then we can tell, okay, whether okay, M3 is the lightest or the heaviest uh, mass eigenstate. Now, at this moment, there's one experiment being set up okay, in China. This is called uh, the Juno experiment. And they are going to uh, position a new detector with 20 kiloton of liquid scintillator located 700 meter underground and also positioned about 53 kilometer away from two very powerful nuclear reactors. So using, okay, say this detector and also, okay, the, by taking data 
for at least okay say four to five years then they should have be able okay to observe okay say the energy uh spectrum very well and then we can tell whether you know we have the normal or the inverted mass hierarchy now at this moment they are installing you know, that detector okay the, in the underground uh, hall and they plan okay to take data uh, a year from now and hopefully next year then you will hear something about this experiment in uh, uh, the Nobel Fest uh, lecture series. And in the last okay, uh, couple of minutes, so let me okay, just okay, say wrap up my talk by briefly talk about okay, say another uh, properties of the neutrino that we can uh, use okay, neutrino, uh, anti-neutrino coming from the reactor uh, to, uh, to probe. So in this case now, uh, what we want to do is to see whether okay, say the neutrino has the okay, magnetic moment or not. Now this can be done by studying the incoming anti-neutrino colliding with the atomic electron inside the target. Now this is okay the graph okay explaining to you okay how the experiment okay the, can be done. Now if uh, the magnetic moment of you know, the neutrino uh, was zero then the number of anti-neutrino electron neutrino scattering um, uh, will follow okay, say, uh, this curve. Okay, electron scattering, I'm sorry. Okay, now, however, if not the main moment of the neutrino is non-zero, then we expect okay, to see more events in uh, the en the, in the kinetic energy of the electron between you know say the, about you know one eV uh, one kilo uh, one keV to about you know say you know uh, you know uh, tens of you know, okay, keV. So this is okay the you know say the the region we are going to focus when we do the experiment. Now there were several okay, experiments in the world uh, using you know, this technique to search for you know, the magnetic moment of uh, the neutrino. So uh, I'm going to use okay, the taxonal uh, experiment uh, done in Taiwan. And this is, okay, say the, the nuclear reactor. And they put, you know, say the, the, the detector uh, only about okay, the 28 meter away from uh, the reactor core. So as a result, okay, they see you know, a very intense okay, anti-neutrino uh, beam going through, okay, say the detector. Now this is okay as a picture showing you, okay, that the detector. You can see, okay, that it's relatively small because they are very close to the reactor core. And also, rather than using liquid scintillator, uh, they use okay the two kinds of inorganic crystals, uh, sodium iodide and also cesium iodide, to detect the, the the light, okay, coming from uh, the electron. Uh, energy loss inside the detector. Now, by comparing uh, the energy uh, spectrum with uh, the reactor, okay, say turn off, you know, was okay, not producing any anti neutrinos, and then compare with, okay, say the number of events that they observe when the, the reactor, okay, is turned on, then they find out, okay, essentially there's no difference between them. So, therefore, that means, okay, the they haven't seen okay the, any evidence related to uh, the magnetic moment of you know, the neutrino. So as a result, then they set a limit uh, on okay the size of okay, the muon uh, of uh, the um, magnetic moment of the, the electron. And also okay there was another okay nuclear, uh, nuclear reactor experiment done okay in Russia. It's called okay gamma, so you can see you know, both experiment obtain more or less okay say the same uh, value for you know say the the, the size of uh, the magnetic moment of uh, the neutrino. So to wrap it up, so you can see you know, okay nuclear reactors, you know are very, very uh, you know uh, powerful tools for studying uh neutrino physics because okay the, you know they can generate okay a huge number of anti-neutrino uh for the experiment 
And also, okay, using nuclear reactors, then you can see, okay, the we can study, okay, quite a bit of uh, uh, um, about, okay, say learn quite a bit about, okay, the, the neutrinos. And I'm sure, okay, in the future, uh, there will be more experiments uh, done using nuclear reactor, you know, for uh, exploring you know, the properties of uh, neutrinos. So the, this is the end, okay, of uh, my lecture. And thank you for uh, listening. And uh, I, I'm happy to answer okay, the you know, questions from you. Dear Professor, uh, thank you for your uh, such interesting and fascinating and compre comprehensive presentation. Uh, unfortunately, um, uh, because of uh, technical problems that we have, uh, could you couldn't uh, hear us and now so uh, again I would like to greet you professor can be look uh, you are welcome and uh, I'm uh, very glad to greet you in the, on the next uh, notebook lecture in Baku in Azerbaijan with your permission um, please um, let me um, I would like to introduce you briefly uh, can be look uh, is professor of physics at the University of California in uh, Berkeley. Uh, his research interest of professor is exploring the nature of elementary particles and their fundamental interactions using different kinds of instrumentation and techniques. His work on neutron isolation received breakthrough prize in fundamental physics in 2018 century. And now, uh, professor, if uh, we don't bother you, uh, I would like to uh, ask a few questions for you. First, sure. my question. Uh, what, cha what chances uh, does give the phenomenon of uh, neutron oscillation to exceed modern physics of elementary particles beyond the standard models? Oh, you're saying, okay, what is... Chances uh, does give the phenomenon of neutron oscillations uh, to oh, exist modern uh, physics? Well, uh, certainly in the standard model, um, uh, it assumes that you know, the neutrinos are massless. So as a result, okay, the, it will not predict uh, neutrino oscillation at all. So therefore, essentially, uh, the discoveries of neutrino oscillation tells us that, okay, that we have to modify you know, the, the, the standard model. Um, I, I don't know whether okay the, that is okay the answer you know, you're looking for, and certainly okay we we don't know why okay say the neutrinos, uh with, with okay uh, okay the light to mix okay certainly this is something okay the you know we we don't understand. Okay, thank you, Professor, for your answers. And the next question, why will be about? We know that there are three types of neutrinos. And according to the theory, uh, the, uh, the theory neutrino has a mass equal to zero, uh, but uh, it's also it's improved that electronic neutrino has a mass. But what about the muon and tau neutrinos? Have they a mass or not? Ah, that's a very good question. Uh, yeah, uh, certainly you can see you know, that by studying neutrino oscillation, um, we can only measure uh, the relative, relative size of, let's you know, say, the, the free neutrino masses, right? Uh, now, in order for us to have you know, neutrino oscillation uh, to happen, then we know, as a matter of fact, okay, the, if we go back to, you know, okay, say, the, the equation um, that I put up here, uh, right here, um, you see, you see down here this equation, right? Yes, I see. So can, I see. Yeah. So you can see, okay, in this case, okay, uh, in order for us to have neutrino oscillation, uh, only one of, okay, say the mass can be zero. The other, the other, okay, say so doesn't have to be. You know, it's okay. At least one of them, okay, that you know should have mass. Otherwise, okay, we cannot have a uh, neutrino oscillation. Okay, I see. Thank you, uh, Professor. Yeah. And it's possible directly to observe the existence of neutrino. It's impossible. 
it's possible uh, directly to observation of neutrino existence of neutrino. Oh, you mean you mean really seeing it? Uh, you know that uh, the existence of neutrino, we need to do some uh, enormous equipment, but directly, uh, spontaneously, can we detect the existence of neutrino? Oh, uh, you mean that once okay is produced, then you detect how, that? Or, or yes, or how uh, did you uh, detect the existence of neutrino? Oh, basically, okay. The uh, the way okay we de we detect okay say or prove that okay the neutrino or anti neutrino the exists is okay say through okay say reaction. So in this case, okay, the since we are using nuclear reactor that produce essentially only the electron anti neutrino. So therefore, you know what we do is okay we rely on this reaction, okay? okay um, and then, okay, the, you know, because experimentally, we can observe the positron and also the neutron, all right? So therefore, okay, okay essentially, um, when we okay, collect data for a while, then we can convince ourselves that uh, we have observed, okay, say the, the incoming, uh, anti neutrino. Now, of course, okay, if we have only one and only one event, then we cannot draw that conclusion. So we need to, okay, say, collect a large sample before, okay, we can convince ourselves that indeed we observe, okay, say, the, the neutrino. Thank you, dear professor. And, uh, and finally, as a young researcher, I would like to get uh, advice from such great uh, scientists as you. Uh, and we all know that researchers require uh, uh, tremendous efforts, passions, and time. And uh, what could you advise young scientists uh, to achieve a success in their investigation and in their researchers? What uh, could you give them advice? Uh -huh. Well, this is a very, very good question. Uh, certainly, when I was young, okay, I yes. also wondered, okay, the, what I should do. Um, I, I would say that the first important question, or uh, I would say question is, okay, but the most important thing is, okay, uh, you have to have a dream. And also, uh, yes. it's crucial. You, you, yeah, it's very crucial. And, and certainly, um, if you want to become an experimentalist, then certainly it's extremely important to be persistent. Uh, because a lot of the time, you know, carrying out okay, experimental research is extremely time consuming. And also a lot of the time is very frustrating because okay, the very often uh, we encounter problems and we need to you know, figure out okay, how to overcome the problems. And sometimes, okay, it can take, okay, say days, months, or as a matter of fact, sometimes yes. even years yes. uh, to, to get that. I mean, for instance, like, okay, neutrino oscillation, even though the idea was proposed, okay, in 1960s or so, however, uh, we did not have any evidence of neutrino oscillation until essentially the, you know, say the, you know, the late 80s and the 90s. So we're talking about, okay, essentially, okay, 20 or 30 years of our time you know, devoting you know, to one particular problem. So therefore, okay, being persistent certainly is very important. Now, of course, okay, another very important uh, uh, fact is uh, it's very important, okay, for you to enjoy what you're doing. Because, okay, that if you do not, okay, enjoy what you're doing, then yes, you can get very, get frustrated very easily. And then in that case, okay, the chance of success, okay, will be diminished. Of course, I agree with you, dear professor. Uh, and thank you, professor, for such full answers. Uh, thank you for spending your time being uh, with us today. I'm very glad to know you. I'm very glad to talk with you. Uh, I believe that your investigation and uh, your efforts in this sphere 
uh, will be useful not for our uh, students and uh, um, young scientists, but even for professor and teaching staff. Thank you, uh, professor. Okay, well, and... okay, thank you very much for the, your invitation. Uh, no, I certainly enjoy a lot okay, talking to you. And I do hope in the future that you know, we can meet okay, face to face. And also, okay, certainly, I do hope that okay, the, uh, you can also okay, the, come so. to my institutions, you know, either okay, the, in the Berkeley, California, or in Hong Kong. That is okay, where I'm stationing right now. Okay, thank you. Have a nice weekend, dear professor. Uh, thank and you. Take care of you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you.